five class. Death Valley, as we mentioned, Louisville and Clemson. Stephen A. picked Clemson. Max picked Louisville. We welcome in our college football analyst, Jonathan Vilma. So yeah. glad to have you with us. Jonathan, I'm going to put you on the spot here, okay? Yeah. Well, I'm getting a death stare you from are? Max a right now. A little side eye from Max. <laughs> Stephen A. is not in studio, so you can't get his side eye. Who is right? <laughs> Stephen A is right. Oh, Clemson boy. is going to win. Stop giving me the death stare, <laughs> Max. Come on, man. This is why Clemson is going to win. You have Deshaun Watson, who's been there, done that. He has experience. Uh, he's been to the championship game last year. He's played in big games. Lamar Jackson has played in one big game, and now it's a true road test. Uh, the second is Clemson has had now two weeks to prepare for after watching the FSU game. He's had two weeks, they've had two weeks to prepare for Lamar Jackson and capitalize on the mistakes that FSU made, uh, i.e. having defensive ends trying to defend Lamar Jackson on the edge one-on-one -on -one when they have absolutely no chance of stopping Lamar Jackson. Switch that up and put a linebacker now on the zone read for Lamar Jackson, let the defensive end crash down. Feather the, run, the, the quarterback and contain him. You can't stop Lamar Jackson. He's a tremendous talent. But you can contain them, you can slow them down, and I think Clemson can do that. And of course, we already know how explosive they are offensively. Look, I would, I get what you're saying. I know why a lot of people, I think most people would say, look, Clemson coming off the national title game where Deshaun Watson, who's the Heisman favorite coming into this year, I think the smart money he had, Deshaun Watson, yep. has now more experience, right? Like, you know, and he almost upset Alabama as it was and now has more experience. And people don't really still believe in Louisville and believe in Lamar Jackson because he's doing it with his legs and because they haven't won on the road. Petrino 0-10 on the road against top teams, uh, top 15 teams. But let's really look at what Louisville is so far this year. You say they got that one, he has that one big game. What they did in that big game, both sides of the ball, the defense too now. Yes, they were at home, but both sides of the ball. They turned FSU, who, by the way, you know, they Ole Miss... FSU had to come back on. So did Alabama. They turned FSU into Marshall or Syracuse or Charlotte. Same team. They whooped them. I mean, it, the game was over. It was garbage time in the second half. So now you say, but now this is on the road against a good team. You think Petrino's never going to beat a good team on the road? The, this is the development, the evolution of a team. First you learn how to win. Then you learn how to win on the road. It is time that this Louisville team takes the next step. And if you look at their trajectory, I think it's right now. Stephen A? I can get where he's coming from because Lamar Jackson is no joke, but I think that if you're Clemson, look at what they employed against Georgia Tech. What they did was they made sure to apply pressure from the outside to keep the quarterback contained. Now, obviously, the interior was obviously decent enough as well, but I think that when you look at what Louisville did, particularly against Florida State, with Duran James being out and really not having any pressure applied to them from the outside as well, they were able to operate in big space, and as a result, Lamar Jackson is just going to eat you alive. I don't I don't think that's going to happen against Clemson. I certainly don't think that's going to happen in Death Valley. And I think that Deshaun Watson, being that individual that showed up in that national championship game, I think that, you know, when you consider now him having to go against Lamar Jackson, I think it's going to apply pressure to Lamar Jackson even more because I think Deshaun Watson is going to show up in this particular game, which is going to put even more pressure on Louisville's offense. I think ultimately somebody other than uh, Lamar Jackson is going to have to show up and play big for them, and I don't think it's going to happen. That's why I'm flowing with Clemson. It's going to be a good game, no doubt, and you can't underestimate Louisville, but I think in a game of this magnitude, based on what we saw from Clemson, I'm inclined to pick Clemson in a game of this magnitude, nationally televised primetime. I'm also going Clemson as well. We have another big program that we want to get to some college football news with them as well. So Alabama backup quarterback Blake Barnett left the program this week. And Nick Saban had some very interesting comments about it. Take a listen. I think the culture has changed a little bit. I think, you know, there's certain pride that people have in competition. There's certain things that I was taught growing up about not quitting and, you know, seeing things through. Uh, I think if I'd have come home and told my dad that I was going to quit the team, I think he'd have kicked me out of the house. I, I don't think I'd had a place to stay. Mm. You know, sometimes you didn't have the choices. My dad used to say, it always looks, the grass always is greener on top of the septic tank. Stephen A., I know you have the utmost respect for Nick Saban, but what did you think about these particular comments? 
I, was, I thought it was very hip, uh, hypocritical on his part, and I was very disappointed in his comments. And you know me, he's my favorite coach in college football. Mm -hmm. I love me some Nick Saban. He's the man. Uh, but in this particular instance, he's wrong. Let's harken back to 2006 and to, in January of 2007. In January of 2007, Nick Saban uh, left the Miami Dolphins as its head coach with three years left on his contract to take over Alabama. Just a month earlier, less than a month earlier, in December of 2006, Nick Saban looked at the media and said, I guess I have to say this, I will not be the coach at Alabama. So essentially he lied or he changed his mind. Whatever the case may be, he had three years left on his contract following a 6-10 and 10 season, season in Miami and left that contract. And it speaks to what my problem is with the, with the collegiate ranks. Coaches are given latitudes that the players themselves are not given. I'm one of those people who's a proponent of a player being should, should be allowed to have the right to get out of his scholarship and go and play for another team the very next year. If the coach can sit up there and leave a team and go and coach another team without having to sit out a year. Why is it fair for the for the coach to be able to do that, but the players not quick, to be able to do really that? Quick, That's my issue here. Really quickly, Jonathan, I'll let you I'll let you go. I just want to say, you're pointing out the hypocrisy correctly, Stephen A. Smith, in what Coach Saban is saying, and he's an incredibly great coach. There's no denying that. But I find I want to use stronger language here. I find this slimy of him, for him to couch this in moral or ethical terms, or as, as, by assailing the character of a kid who's making a choice that affects his eligibility and his future to couch it in moral terms like he's a or, or character like he's a quitter because he's making the same choice Nick Saban did that's just slimy it's transparent it's wrong and Nick Saban ought to be ashamed of himself for making that statement yeah I agree I think Nick Saban we have to look at the other perspective of Nick Saban he's saying well even if you were not going to start for the next three years I still have to coach you I still have a scholarship used up for you, and I can't take that scholarship away and go to a, another five-star recruit. So Nick Saban is looking at it from a very narrow window, and I can understand his perspective. I agree with you guys. I think it's very hypocritical what he's saying. But he's saying, man, if I have to stick with you for the next three years, four years, because I can't pull your scholarship, it's not a, a yearly thing where, hey, you're not playing well, sorry, you got to go. I don't know how you're going to get your education, but it's not going to be here. He's saying, well, then you can't quit on me. Yeah, right. But he, well, you know, it's an issue are the rules, not Nick, not not the kid's character. I, I, I hear and you. And now how right. the rules negatively issue. affect well, Nick let's also, Don't let's also, the kid's Let's character. also remember something very important. The kid, Jalen Hurts, who's starting for him now, is a true freshman. Blake Barnett is leaving because a true freshman is starting ahead of him. And chances are he ain't going anywhere for the next several years. Mm -hmm. So what is this guy, Blake Barnett, supposed to do? Okay, I can't quarterback for Nick Saban at Alabama, but I may be able to play somewhere else. Nick Saban wants him to stay there and just sit on the bench and then label him a quitter because he otherwise is wrong. Yeah. It's totally wrong. Yeah, take Max up is right. with the rules, with not that. the kid. No, for sure. Stephen A., this next subject is going to put a smile on your face. Le'Veon Bell returns this weekend for the black and yellow. Yes, sir. The guys will tell you what you expect after the break. Jonathan, so good having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. First Take is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Nissan, innovation that excites. You know, you guys saw that. We, we lost to just about every element of that matchup. They outcoached us. They outplayed us. Uh, they were better fundamentally, tackling and so forth. Plays pumping. He is floating it, and it's complete to Huff at the 50, the 45. He's on his feet at the 30, the 20. Pass back at the 10, the 5. He is in. Jared Sproles. We got our ass kicked. I'll simply say it like that. We got work to do, obviously, as we come here with one agenda, and that's to play winning football, and obviously we didn't do that today. The Steelers are coming off a bad loss to the Eagles in Philly last Sunday, but their offense getting a big boost this weekend. Le'Veon Bell returns from his three-game suspension. Stephen A., what do you expect from the Steelers with Bell returning? 
Well, first of all, I expect the running game to return. D'Angelo Williams has struggled at least the last couple of weeks or so because he is 33 years of age and he's had a lot. He's had to carry a hefty workload. Uh, but I expect the Steelers' defense to look a little bit better. Uh, Alex Smith doesn't make a lot of mistakes, uh, but he's not a game changer per se, even though he has the potential uh, to do a lot of different things. In the end, what it comes down to is that the Steelers were an absolute embarrassment last week. I was incredibly ashamed of what I saw against the Philadelphia Eagles. They should have been ashamed of themselves. And they should come out ready to play football this week because as far as I'm concerned, they've had two weeks off because they certainly didn't show up last week. It was just a, a, dis a disgraceful performance, maybe the worst performance I ever saw by this team in a Mike Tomlin ever. I think they know it. I think everybody else knows it. And we'll see what happens. Marcus Peters is no joke for Kansas City. Antonio Brown and others should have their work cut out for them. Marcus Wheaton doesn't need to be dropping three passes like he did before. He needs to do better and help out Antonio Brown. Uh, we'll see what happens. But Le'Veon Bell is definitely going to be an upgrade if for no other reason, not just because he's gifted, but because he brings fresh legs, per se, <clears throat> to the equation, and they desperately need that from the running back spot, as well as catching passes out of the backfield. I think it helps, and I think as a result, the Steelers win this game. Chiefs are just a good team, and I love this game, and it's tempting to take them against the Steelers the way the Steelers looked last week, and, and given what the Chiefs bring to the table. <clears throat> However, I think, Stephen A., as you pointed out, they were humiliated, the Steelers were. Yes, at Philly, but still in an all-Pennsylvania rivalry-type game, they were humiliated. They're coming home. They have the best running back in the game, and apologies to Adrian Peterson even before his weak numbers so far this year, if you want to blame the Minnesota offensive line. But when Le'Veon Bell, over the last several seasons, has been on the field, I can't believe anyone would argue another running back over him. He is clearly the best running back in the game, all around running back in the game. You're getting that guy back after you've been humiliated in a rivalry game, uh, a high profile game because the quality of your opponent. I love this matchup. I think the Steelers win in an overtime type game. It goes down to the wire, maybe overtime. And I think the Steelers pull it out. I think Le'Veon Bell is a big boost for them. Well, I hope he is because he needs to be. He's got a lot of making up to do because remember, even though he's coming back, it's not like he was coming back from injury. He got injured last year, missed the second half of the season because of it. He always seems to get injured against Cincinnati because of their low blow, you know, the low blows that they throw in his direction uh, in some fashion. But in this particular game, uh, he's been out for the first three games of the season because he was suspended, you know, weed issues and beyond. So he's got some making up to do. He's got to be dependable. He's got to be somebody that the Steelers can rely upon because a legitimate argument could be made is that the Steelers have underachieved in the years that he's been there mm -hmm. because this wasn't the first time he's been suspended. So he's got to step up to the plate and do everything that he can to make amends. And he clearly has the and their talent defense to do so, gotta, and I think he'll put it off. Their defense has got to get a lot better. You know, last year it's like, well, if they have a bend but don't break defense and they can stay healthy on offense, maybe they could go all the way. It didn't happen. They couldn't stay healthy on offense. Still really good. And the defense wasn't enough to overcome that this year they showed improvement early against the run and you had reason to believe boy this Pittsburgh defense is coming around and then it was nowhere to be seen against Philadelphia last week so that's the, the big if there is does the Steelers defense show up yep. against the Chiefs assuming it's a bend but don't break style defense I think they can win this game after last week and they're certainly going to be focused and we know Le'Veon Bell have fresh legs but I want to get to another subject we asked you guys earlier in the show if you are buying Des Bryant's excuse Max and I were buying it. The results are in. America is with Stephen A. 69% say no, not buying Dez's excuse. Stephen A, your thoughts? Well, like I said, I'm not judging him harshly or whatever. My reason for not buying it is that it's still unacceptable. It's only acceptable in the world of Jason Garrett because even though you might say something to reprimand them, at the end of the day, you ain't going to really do anything because no one has any reason to fear Jason Garrett because they consider him a puppet for Jerry Jones. That's really what this comes yeah. down to, and they need a firm hand at the head coaching position. It's not Dallas. an issue of me buying the excuse. To it's an immature decision he made. It's a bad decision. He should make better decisions. But it's, does it reflect the right stuff about Des Bryant? Is that the kind of guy you want on your squad? I think the answer is yes. He'll do anything, including avoiding MRIs, whatever, to stay on the field, to stay on the field for his yeah. teammates and his team. You want that guy. And that's also where I agreed with you, not the actual buying it part, but what you just explained. Guess what, well, guys? Well, I'm glad y'all agreed with each Our other to go into the weekend. Our weekend's about to start. Enjoy yourselves. That's good.